okay. I think she gets hangry. Angry, yes. Yeah. Sounds, sounds about right. Oh, that's what it's it is. Angry, it's because your blood sugar is low. That's what causes this whole problem. Exactly. <laughs> if you well, our fearless production manager, Sarah Rowe. <laughs> Ooh. She got an upgrade. Well, guys. Just want to say, uh, let's kick ass and chew bubble gum, even though we're all out of gum. But uh, let's do our best and make sure it's better than all the rest. <laughs> this is so fun. One minute heard. Thank you. <laughs> is that what you're supposed to do for the, the stage managers? Acknowledge them? Yeah. Oh, but he's the producer. We don't have to acknowledge him. Yeah, one minute. Okay, coming down. Zoom all over. <laughs> it's a pretty cool camera, isn't it? <coughs> Maybe the announcer will be the count. Live on CGSW <laughs> Studio <laughs> One in Calgary. Studio <laughs> One! Studio <laughs> One! One! <laughs> Nine! Ha! 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 Zero! Ha! 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 <laughs> Last minute takes way too long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that level of anticipation. The energy rising. <clears throat> the following program contains language and scenes of violence which may be disturbing to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Live from CJSW Studio One in Calgary. You're traveling through a neighborhood, a neighborhood that appears like any other, with its rows of boxy, colorful houses and freshly cut lawns. A neighborhood where nothing much happens. And then you turn down one street where anything may happen. From the macabre to the otherworldly, there's a sign appearing in your headlights. The sign that reads... To introduce tonight's show, Dark Side Drive producer Justin Guild. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. Would first like to invite you to join us next week for our season finale, a modern retelling of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein in honor of the 200th anniversary of the novel. While it may be the official season finale, we couldn't just stop there, so we will be producing some bonus material and extra episodes in the next few months. Our website and Facebook page will have details on these as they are announced. Due to time restrictions in next week's episode, I'd like to give special thanks to the following people and organizations who've been instrumental in their contributions to this season. We would like to thank the Alberta Foundation for the Arts, Audio Engineering Associates of Pasadena, the Writers Guild of Alberta, the Sharon Joyce Johnson Fund for Emerging Artists, CGSW volunteers and staff, Jordan Simpson, Stephanie Shappett, and Josh Corcoran for their tireless efforts in editing scripts. The performers who have participated in this season, to the writers who gave us a great variety in storytelling and who endured the rewrites, to the musicians who composed and scored music for the series, and to the friends and family of the aforementioned who were patient through late nights and rehearsals. And finally, Elizabeth Pascuzzi and Jerry Delani, who taught me personally to strive for the best in broadcasting, no matter the production. Tonight's play is about persons with disabilities, specifically those with visual impairments. For the maximum experience in listening to this evening's story, we suggest that you close your eyes for the next 30 minutes. Unless, of course, you're driving, please don't do that. And now, without further ado, Stuart, would you like to do the honors? Absolutely. Tonight's episode, Blind Taste Test, written and directed by Ben Rowe. Good morning. It is 8 a.m. on Monday, September 5th. <sighs> you have one appointment today, 2 p.m. Date with Jennifer.
Good, you're up. Breakfast's almost ready. Smells delicious. What's cooking? Scrambled eggs. It's probably the butter you're smelling. Have a seat. Scrambled eggs, home style. Forks at nine, knife's at three, and your coffee is at one. Thanks. This is really good. What's doing that? I mean, mm. that's the butter. It'll do that. Mm. So, um, any plans for today? Yes, in fact. I'm meeting with an editor today who the publisher thinks can help make my book more palatable. Your food tastes great, though. To read, not to eat, dummy. Oh, uh, that makes sense. When's the meeting? 2.30. Why? Need me to drive you somewhere? Yes, uh, thank you. I, I, I have this date at, um, two. Just, just to meet up at a coffee shop. Where did this come from? I, um, I, I made a dating profile. <laughs> Oh, no. Tell me you didn't. Well, I guess your profile pic must at least be in focus if someone swiped right for you. Now, forgive me for saying this, but does she know she's getting into a blind date? Oh, man. I guess I just walked right into that one, didn't I? Well, yeah, because you're blind. Ha, ha. And yes, she knows I'm blind. Now, can you drive me there or not? Of course. I mean, we can't have you driving yourself now, can we? Just wait until an affordable self-driving car comes on the market. Then bam, I'm a free man again. Well, I'm not buying it for you, so you better get back on your feet again because I don't think the government checks are going to cover it. So, are you going to have to tell this editor all your secret ingredients? There are no secret ingredients. It's just knowing what to put together in what amounts. People have just forgotten what's good for them. Over here. Up ahead in the booth. Am I standing across from you or beside you? Across. If you slide into the booth on your right, you'll be all good. Thanks. I haven't been here before. Is it just as overpriced as everywhere else? <laughs> Afraid so. But I ordered you a cappuccino. I hope that's all right. It's right in front of you. Well, it smells about right, so I suppose I'll take your word it's not laced with anything. <laughs> that wouldn't be a very good way to make a first impression, would it? <laughs> hey, when you're blind, you have to watch out for people trying to take advantage of you. I guess so. I never really thought about it. Neither had I. I mean, I'm still getting used to a lot of it. Oh, oh uh, sorry. Where are my manners? I presume you're Jennifer? Pleased to meet you. Same to you, Arthur. You haven't always been blind, then? <laughs> no, uh, three months, but it's been a long time coming. Uh, de degenerative myopia. And do you mind if I ask what that means? No, not at all. Um, do you wear glasses? No. Well, my sister does. A lot of people are myopic, short-sighted. So was I. Basically, your eye grows too long and the lens gets out of focus. So you wear glasses or contacts. In my case, my eyes kept growing longer and longer until my retinas detached and I couldn't see anything at all. Jesus. Oh, uh, sorry. Is it gross? I know some people get grossed out by the eye talk. So, if you've only been blind three months, that must have caused a lot of changes for you. Well, yes and no. My eyesight had been getting slowly worse for a while, so I saw it coming. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it did mean I couldn't really keep working. I was an electrical engineer, and it's not easy to do when you can't see what you're doing. Oh, I guess not. But, I mean, shouldn't your work have to... Uh, accommodate me? I mean, sure, but at a certain point... You're in denial if you're asking to do the work I was doing without sight. Gotta move on. Find something new. It's tough. I, I just haven't found it yet. So then what have you been doing since? Well, my sister Anna's been looking after me. I'm living at her place and she cooks for us and is helping me with things as I adjust. She dropped me off here, in fact. Wow. 
She must be really great. That's a lot to take on. Well, we lucked out in a weird way. She's a chef, but she quit her job at the restaurant, and I guess you could say she's working from home. She got an advance from a publisher to write a cookbook, so that and the uh, government support I get are keeping things afloat. For now, it's working out well, though I guess she's having some sort of trouble with the book. I don't really understand it. Her cooking's great. Well, I guess I'll have to try it sometime. So you managed to score the full scoop on me pretty quick. How about yourself? Oh, well, I'm in school to be a teacher. (laughs) That sounds pretty simple, so I'm guessing it's not. (laughs) You just summed up my life. Sorry again about not picking you up. A meeting went long. I hope the bus wasn't too much trouble. It was. I walked home. Good Lord, Artie. Did you manage all right? Sure. I, I, I put headphones on and let Google Maps lead me home. But that's definitely my exercise quota for the day. I'm starved. Well, it's almost ready. New burrito recipe. Mm, smells delicious. So what happened with your meeting? Oh, that. Well, he felt I need some kind of gimmick to hang the book on. I told him there's no gimmick to the food, so he suggested there needed to be a gimmick with me then. I didn't really like that. So I'm going to be asking them for another editor. Oh, you don't think you can work things out with this guy? I highly doubt it. Good morning. It is 9.30 a.m. on Wednesday, October 12th. Uh, Yep, yep, I'm up. Today is Jennifer's birthday. You have one appointment, 6 p.m., dinner with Jennifer. Yes, yes, I know. Good morning. Nothing special this morning for breakfast, just hard-boiled eggs. That's fine. You need a shave. We can do that after breakfast, though. Yeah, definitely needs doing, though. Uh, Today's Jenny's birthday, and I still have to get her a gift. Oh, good job. I'm sure she'd love to hear that in all your busy, unemployed hours, you hadn't managed to get out to buy her a gift until the last minute. Speaking of which, can I count on you to take me shopping? Another woman's eye couldn't hurt. You'll have to do without. I have to be cooking all day. I'm hosting that dinner party with the publishing executives, remember? I've got to really wow them. Well, I wouldn't want to get in your way then. I'll call Jennifer and get her to pick me up from the mall, and then we'll be having a birthday dinner at her place. Oh, yeah? Planning on staying the night? (laughs) Uh, Well, no, I mean, that is... uh... It's fine either way, little brother. Though, if you're home early, maybe you can score some leftovers from dinner. Hey, are you really blind? Um, Yes. Can you get around without the cane? Well, it's it's mostly helpful in places I haven't been, to sweep for obstacles, judge the path ahead, you know? Is it expensive to get, or is it covered by insurance or something? I mean, wouldn't any stick do? Well, it's not really that. Oh! Oh! Uh, Jesus Christ, you gotta be kidding me! Anna, are you home? Uh, Just cleaning up in the kitchen. How was the birthday dinner? Fine, fine. It's just been a long day. Didn't she like her gift? It wasn't that. Some jackass jumped me and stole my cane while I was waiting for a bus. 
Damn, thing's only worth about 20 bucks. Well, for Christ's sake, don't people have any decency? Well, I have leftover lasagna from the dinner if you want some. Oh. Yeah, that, that would be great, actually. Jennifer's great and all, but she can't match your cooking. Of course not. <laughs> Knife and fork on your left. Thanks. It, it was actually a great time, though, despite everything. She's really wonderful. How did the um, dinner go, by the way? Oh, I swear, they're all such idiots. I wouldn't exactly say they had no taste, that's not fair, but talking to them was beyond frustrating. How are the leftovers? Delicious! It's a very sweet taste. What's in it? Pork. Hmm. Good morning. It is 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday, November 15th. Yep, thanks. I'm making a second pod. You want any? You all right? Yeah, I, I just haven't been sleeping well. Hey. I, I know you've been down since the publisher dropped your book. At least they let you keep the advance. <laughs> Small comfort. So you start working at another restaurant. They'd be lucky to have you. Well, maybe if they weren't all closing down, or if they were willing to, to bring on new hires. Paying me probably means dropping someone else. It's pretty rough out there. Well, um, listen. I, I, I wanted to talk to you about an idea I had. Something that could maybe help lighten your load. Oh, did you find a job? No, uh, not exactly that. No, um, Jennifer and I, we were, we were talking about me moving in with her, actually. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, you wouldn't have to be cooking for me and driving me around and buying extra stuff for me and all that. I'd be out of your hair, which should help with stretching things till you get a restaurant position again, right? And does she know what she's getting into? What's that supposed to mean? Does she know what it means to take care of you? To feed you, to buy your clothes, to shave your face, to drive you everywhere, to make sure you have everything you need? Does she know what it takes to support you? Is she willing to do all that? I'm your sister, Art. I will do it forever and always because we're family and because I love you. Does she love you that much? You're making a big deal out of nothing. You know I'm getting better at handling myself every day. It would be as big of a strain on her as it is on you. It hasn't been a strain. I would do anything for you. You're my brother. But she's a girlfriend. What happens a month down the line when you're lost and she has to come pick you up but she can't get away from work? What happens when your needs wear her down and she decides you're not worth it anymore? Did you think of that? What will you do? So I'm asking, does she know what she's getting into? I mean, of course. I, I tell her about all the things you do for me. Naturally, she knows she'll have to help me with things, but it'll be fine. She loves me. Oh, you've been dating, what, two months? Listen, you haven't even met her. No, you're right, I haven't. Why don't we do something about that? Why don't we have her for dinner? Right. Okay. Sure. Tonight? Yes, of course. Why not tonight? I, I can go pick her up this afternoon, and then I'll cook a nice meal, and I'm sure she'll be lovely. Right. Yes. You're going to love her. You'll see. And she'll see all that I do for you, and maybe it will give her a better understanding of the dedication your caretaker needs. Jesus, where have you been? It's so late. Sorry, couldn't be helped. Well, 
Well, what the hell happened? Is Jennifer with you? No, I, I went to pick her up and, well, we ended up getting into an argument. I'm, I'm sorry, but I may have ruined things a bit. I, I drove off without her. What? I, I called her like five times in the last hour and a half and she hasn't even picked up. God damn it, she's probably mad at me now. How could you just go and blow up my life like that? Look, I'm sorry, okay? I, I just, I got upset. We yelled at each other. I'm sure it will be fine. I'm sure it will be fine. But right now, I'm starving. I have some fresh steak here that I picked up. I'm going to pan fry it with butter, garlic, and thyme. Nothing fancy, but it'll only take maybe six minutes to cook. And I guarantee it'll be delicious. I guarantee it. <laughs> Anna? Anna? You, you, you can't just make this better with food. I was worried. She, she wasn't answering her phone, neither were you. And now, because of whatever you said to her when you were upset, maybe she'll never answer a call from me again. God damn it! I finally had something going for myself, and you can't just expect me to be so excited to eat some steak that I'm going to forget all about it. You can't cook all your problems away. You'd be surprised. It didn't impress that editor. It didn't wow your publisher. You thought you were so great, but they dropped your book, and now you can't even get a job serving french fries. What do you say to that? I say, eat up. Well, it's very fresh. It's, it's good, Anna. It's always good. Consistently delicious. I'm sorry. I didn't mean those things I said. I didn't think so. You've always enjoyed my cooking, and I hope you always will. Well, I'll call Jennifer in the morning and try to salvage this whole thing. Don't bother. What? You've got me to take care of you. No one can do it better than I can. I'm your sister. I know you, and I love you. It's... Is that what this is all about still? You don't think I should move in with her. Listen, I should still call her. I need to apologize for what's happened. No, you don't. You know, you're right. I don't need to apologize. You do. You need to call her and apologize. No, I don't think I'll be doing that. Not much point as far as I can see it. How is your steak? I already said it's good. It's very sweet in the middle. Doesn't really taste like any beef I've had before. I didn't say it was beef. You said it was steak. Steak is a type of cut, not an animal. Then... What is it? It's like you said, I solve my problems with cooking. Whenever I'm feeling angry or boxed in or threatened, I know that I can make a meal, eat, enjoy, and the problem will be solved. It's like I said, don't bother calling her. What? We have a great relationship. We take care of each other. I look out for you. I make sure people aren't taking advantage of you, that you get to where you need to go and that you're provided for. And you? You're my taste tester. You gobble everything down happily as, as I've experimented with new recipes, new ingredients. What the hell are you talking about? You're just rambling in circles. What's in the damn steak? You've never asked me before. You've never asked what was in the lasagna or, or what was in the burritos or what's been in any of the meals I've served you. I mean, I mean it was meat. If you say steak, I, I assume it's beef. If you say it's bacon, I assume it's pork. 
What the hell are you being so coy about? I told you. Don't bother calling Jennifer. <laughs> what? What? No. No, that's... I don't understand. What is there to understand, Arthur? I'm here to take care of you. You don't need anybody else. You... you killed those people! You cooked them! You fed it all to... You're disgusting. Pull yourself together. You enjoyed the meals, didn't you? Properly prepared, there's nothing wrong with eating people. We've been doing it for over 600,000 years. I told you, people have just forgotten what's good for them. No, no, this isn't real. You wouldn't do this. This is insane. Arthur, I am your sister. This is real. You've been helping me for so long, trying out my recipes, and I've been helping you too. We're a perfect fit. And all these others, well, they were just meat. Cook it, fry it, grill it, broil it, bake it, it doesn't matter. Oh no, no, Jennifer, she, she... Jennifer could never take care of you like I do. Mm, no! Ah! Anna? Uh, uh, are you there? Anna? Are you okay? Hello? Where are you? Please, talk to me! Oh god! Oh god, oh god! Please just let me wake up! You have just heard Blind Taste Test here on Dark Side Drive. Arthur was played by Mike Anthony, Anna by Wendy Froberg, and Jennifer by Natalie Buckley. Dark Side Drive is produced by Justin Guild. Scoring by our fearless production manager, Sarah Rowe. Story editing by Josh Kirkhorn. Blind Taste Test was written and directed by Ben Rowe. Our theme music, Twisted Calliope, was composed and performed by the Lotars. Like and share us on Facebook. Subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. Or visit us at www.darksidedrive.com for upcoming episode previews and episode guides. Darkside Drive is funded through a generous grant from the Alberta Foundation for the Arts. Stuart Bentley announcing. Until next time. <laughs> Good night. Darkside Drive is a co-production of CJSW 90.9 FM and the Calgary Radio Playhouse.
her. So, <laughs> my page is I know. Oh, every single time. Oh my god, you got rave reviews in there. Everybody yeah, really liked it. Booth loved you. Yeah. Yeah. Every <laughs> single so. time, but somehow they got upside down. I know. I saw that. I was like, I was like oh, no. Shit. Oh, wait till you watch this. Thank yeah, I know. And I, you know what? I think I'm going to make an exception. I can put the whole thing on YouTube. Because usually I just Fantastic. cut it. But if you're going to be doing this, so oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, hey. on YouTube. Do you want? Uh, you want to record the? Yeah.